Welcome back to the School of Obedience. Good to have everybody back. Don Pullen here. Um, before we continue, please remember, like, subscribe, and share. And share again, and share again. God bless you. Today, I want to continue. I want to do the second part to the three-part teaching on living in the Holy Spirit. Okay, remember the first one? For those of you that heard it, if you did not see that teaching, please make sure you go and check it out. There's a card above me on the screen. Click on that and go and check out the first video before you see this one. All right, very important. So we want to continue talking about living in the Spirit. So let's get into today's teaching. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, the Bible says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own? So last week or the last teaching on walking in the Spirit, we were talking about how we must dwell in the Word be in the Word so that the Holy Spirit can have access to our lives and how the Holy Spirit comes and testifies to the Word of God. Now you are living in the Word. You are obedient to the Word. You are practicing the Word of God. You are meditating on the Word. So the Holy Spirit then comes and dwells in you. But there's something that you need to take notice of. He says, you are not your own. Now, that is interesting because the question then is, if I'm not my own and my body is the temple of God and the Spirit dwells in me, if I don't belong to myself anymore, who do I belong to? You belong to God. That means my life is now to be lived in a way that is pleasing to God. And, and, and this, is, this, is, this is the part. This is the part. Your desires, your carnal desires, are set aside. You desire the things that the Spirit desires in you and through you, which is to obey and to please God. All right? You are not your own. This is the higher life. This is the greater expression of the word working in your life. Now, if we go to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 9, the Bible says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. It is important to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. I want to talk about something just now, but before, before that, I'm going to put a card above me. I did a series of teachings on the Holy Spirit, very important, very informative. There are some misconceptions that we had as a church about the Holy Spirit. A lot of that was corrected and understanding how I am filled with the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit works in my life. Please go and see that. Okay, when you have time, just take time out, listen to that, because there's a lot of things that you need to understand concerning the Holy Spirit that I cannot deal with here. Okay, I want to focus on living in the Spirit, but that teaching is there. Please make sure you check it out. Now, he says, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Indeed, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. So, once you are living under the Word of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you, immediately you become a spiritual person. You are not living in the flesh. That does not mean you are out of touch with what's going on here in this world. 
It doesn't mean you don't eat anymore. It does not mean that you don't care about your family anymore. All right, I want you to understand that. But what it means is your desires, your passions, the things that you are drawn to, they are now spiritual things. You are dead to the world, dead to self. You are spiritual. Now, he says, if anyone does not have the Holy Spirit, he does not belong to Christ. If anyone does not have the Holy Spirit, he does not belong to Christ. Something for you to think about. Talking about the Holy Spirit dwelling and influencing our life. All right. I want you to understand something. As a believer, as a believer, being subject to the Word of God allows the Holy Spirit to dwell in your life. But if you are not subject to the Word, if you are not given to the Word, and there's something that I need to say. I've said this so many times before, and I need to say this. Christianity is not defined by our opinions and ideas. Christianity is defined by the Word of God. Okay, don't call yourself a believer, a Christian, if you have not accepted the terms of Jesus Christ, which are written in his word. That's very important, very important to understand. So if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in you, there will be something that is dwelling in you. In fact, let's look at a few verses here so that we have better understanding of living in the Spirit. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 16, the Bible says, And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So God dwelling in you, you are his temple. You no longer have fellowship with idols and the things of this carnal world. You live in the spirit. It's a lifestyle, continuous and persistent lifestyle, living in the spirit. Okay, now let's go now to the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. The Bible says, But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwells in you. So God then dwells in you by his Spirit, thus confirming that the Holy Spirit that is sent to us is the Spirit of God. And when God dwells in you with His Spirit, you are living in the Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit comes to your life not to be subject to you, but for you to be subject to Him. The Holy Spirit is not a genie to come and give you whatever you want. Give Him cake, give Him fruit, give Him whatever He wants to eat. The Holy Spirit is not there for that. Okay, the Holy Spirit comes into your life for you to be subject to him. The reason he is manifest in your life is because you have subjected yourself to the word of God. That is why he is manifest. And he is then coming to teach you and guide you into deeper truths and to reveal Christ to you. Can you say amen to that? Now, let's go to the book of Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So can you notice here? God says he'll dwell in you through his spirit. 
the Holy Spirit then dwells in you. Now he's saying, let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay, this is because that is you living in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit works with the Word. And how do you let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly? Admonishing each other in psalms and hymns with, with, with Scripture, encouraging each other with songs to the Lord. You live in the Spirit by the Holy Spirit dwelling in you, the Word dwelling in you, God dwelling in you, obviously through His Spirit. And then if we go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, I am persuaded that it is in you also so faith dwells in you now please note all this stems from what being in the word how does faith come faith comes by hearing hearing what hearing the word of god listen to me not listening to teachings from preachers yes this edifies and helps teaches and guides you but hearing the word of god the actual truth, undiluted truth. That is how faith comes. So everything stems from the Word of God. It brings me to say how beautiful is the Word of God. How amazing are the letters that are written in Scripture that can transform a life, build our faith, bring the Spirit of God to dwell in our hearts. How amazing is the word. Let us not neglect the word, but embrace it. Let us love the word because it is truth. And the word draws us closer to God. Faith dwells in you through the word. The spirit dwells in you through the word. And all this is you living in the spirit. Living in the spirit. But there's something that I want to show you. Because if you reject the word, if you do not read your Bible, if you do not read your Bible, if you do not obey the Bible, you will fall into darkness. You will be taken into the world. You will be absorbed by the evils of this world and your life will be led to destruction. Let me show you something. The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 17. I'm actually going to read from verse 14. But listen to this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. So by nature, we are carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. So what I'm doing in my life, I don't allow it. It's desires that I'm drawn to. And the good that I want to do, I don't do it. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Why? Because the law shows you that what you are doing is wrong. Because without the law, we live by a law that says, do what thou wilt, do as you please. And if you think it's right, it's right. If you think it's wrong, it's wrong. But the law now shows you what is right and what is wrong. And the law has exposed to you righteousness, okay, and evil. But you still find yourself doing what is wrong, doing what is evil. Why? find out now then verse 17 there is sorry now then it is no more I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me it is not me that is doing these things but sin that dwells in me so if you are not in the word and you are not living in the Spirit, and the Spirit is not dwelling in you, then sin dwells in you. Okay? It is sin that dwells in you. And what does the Bible say? 
When sin comes into your life, sin wants to master you. He wants to take control of you, enslave you. So you find yourself giving up things in your life that are good, that are godly, in order to entertain your carnal flesh. Why? Because sin has taken a hold of you because you've turned away from the word of God. So it's either you live in the spirit or you live under bondage to sin. Okay. So now we come away from carnality and we come to live in the spirit. We've given ourselves to the word. We understand that we are the temple of God. And now being spiritual and living in the spirit, we are under the influence of the Holy Spirit. It says in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63, it is the spirit that gives life. So now you have life, you have new life in the Holy Spirit, okay? The flesh profits nothing. All those deeds of the flesh, the carnal deeds of the flesh, profits nothing. Now, again, not talking about just doing wrong stuff and doing nonsense. Anything that is satisfying to the flesh profits nothing. It profits nothing. You can sit and watch a movie for about, about three hours and what do you get at the end of the movie? Nothing. But Jesus goes on to say, the words that I speak unto you are spirit and they are life. Again, he keeps coming back to the word of God. And this needs to, so we need to learn from this, that the word is essential. The spiritual life is founded on the word of God. Okay, I don't need to get into too much detail concerning that because I've done a teaching on that already, but it's founded on the Word of God. But the Holy Spirit has come into your life to influence you and now to make you godly, to bring you to a place of godliness and a place of life. But the works and the deeds of the flesh must die. Now, when you're living in the Spirit, listen to me, our Christian faith is not complex. Okay? Yes, you have to be faithful and you have to be committed, but our Christian faith is not complex. There are no steps and levels and all these things. When you are living in the Spirit, you are living under the leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit. You understand that? That is living in the Spirit, being subject to the Holy Spirit, and everything the Holy Spirit says in your life ties in with the Word of God that you are meditating on. But how do we recognize the Spirit working in our lives? How do we recognize the Spirit's guidance and voice? How do we know that we are living in the Spirit? How do we discern between our own thoughts and the guidance and the teaching and the leadership of the Holy Spirit? Because we know that the Holy Spirit does not speak audibly to us. We know that he guides us through gentle nudges and instructions and, and through scripture and speaks into our heart. So how do we know? Because that's, that's the main question now is on this spirit life and being spirit. I understand I'm supposed to be in the word, but how do I know that I'm hearing the Holy Spirit? Because a lot of the times we have these things where people blame God for a lot of decisions in their life. Oh, God said do this and God said do that. But it's actually their own thoughts. How do I know that I am living in the Spirit? And how do I know that the Spirit is guiding me? Before I answer that, and which I will not answer today, I'll answer in the next part to this teaching, which will be the final part. But I want you to understand something. Before you come to a place in your life where you know for certain that you are walking and living in the Spirit, you have to eliminate the deeds of the flesh. And I'm not just talking about sin. I'm talking about things that the flesh loves. 
We have to eliminate those things from our lives. And I'm not going to sit here and give you a list of what you should eliminate. You know the things that contaminate your mind. You know. Draw away from those things. Because you cannot claim guidance by the Holy Spirit, but you are drawing deeper and deeper into carnal and fleshly things. You cannot do that. And it's sad to say this, but this is true. A lot of the times we claim spirituality. We claim the presence of God. We claim that the Holy Spirit is here and the Holy Spirit is here now in this moment, which is actually not true. Because how is it that we live carnally the whole week and then come together in a group setting and claim now that the Holy Spirit is with us? All it is is an, a, is, is a heightened emotion. It's an expression of our desire to be spiritual, but we're not willing to make the commitment of faithfulness to be spiritual. So the first thing that you have to realize in order for you to know that you are in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to put yourself away. You have to die to self. And when you look at the Christian walk, when you come to Christ, when you come to salvation, you have to die to yourself. When you are baptized, the symbol is dying to your old self and being born again a new man. When you become a disciple of Christ, the only way you can become a disciple of Christ is by picking up your cross. So death to self is essential in the spiritual journey. Death to self is essential to walking in the Spirit. So before we talk about what the Bible says on how and, and why and how do I know, that's the thing that you've got to come to terms with. We cannot have a compromised union between the Spirit world and the carnal world because that place does not exist. That place does not exist. You have to determine in your heart that, yes, I want to walk in the Spirit, and then by doing that, submit to the Word of God. Because you will never, never fully comprehend what God has set apart for you. And you will never know the working of the Holy Spirit until you have totally submitted yourself and died to this world, died to the desires and the love and the things of this world. You have to draw away from the world, from the things of the world, and draw more and more to Christ before you reach any level of spirituality, any level of walking in the Spirit, any relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to die. Like I said, death to self is essential. It is a prerequisite for you being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Pick up your cross. Die to yourself. Paul testifies, I die daily. It is no longer I that live. So that's what I want you to think about, meditate on. Have I taken the leap? Have I made that decision to live according to the word in order to be spiritual? And then from there, we can talk about how to discern the Holy Spirit working in my life. How do I know the Spirit's thoughts over my own thoughts? We can talk about that in the next teaching. Something for you to think about. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Please remember, share. It is your duty to share the word of God and to share the truth. So please do that. God bless you again. And please remember, as true disciples of Jesus Christ, we learn, we practice, and we teach. That's the only way to do it. Amen. See you in the next one.